It's a strange and scary time for all of us. My binding has been all over the place the past two weeks. I needed a project to centre myself. For me, the bookbinding equivalent of comfort food is springbacks. But I wanted something fun, not serious like a big ledger. Then I remembered the mini springback I made ages ago. Small things are always cute and fun, so that's the new project. It's slightly larger than three inches tall, so it can't be called miniature, but you could trim it just a bit harder and meet that, this definition easily enough. The paper I'm using is a lightweight 50 GSM bank layout. It's an A3 size and it ends up in the right grain direction once it's folded. I'm going to do 10 sections, so I'll tear out 10 pages and one extra for the end papers. Rather than cutting the paper down to size and then folding folios, I'm going to fold this A3 paper four times. This can be a bit tricky because some of the folds are against the grain. So just use your bone folder to help the folds get started and you can work it out. The other trick with uh, folding like this is on the second fold, on the end that's open, you need to do what's called cutting the bolt so that when you fold it over uh, there's give uh, around the fold and on the subsequent folds you have to do it as well so you cut the bolt and then on the end that's been cut that's the part that gets folded over I really like this Canson bank layout paper it's great for lining boards and it's good for these small books, not that I do small books very often. The only issue is that when I went to the art store a few months ago to buy some, uh, they were out of stock. Uh, they had a replacement uh, store brand paper that was slightly heavier and the grain direction was different and in general uh, it wasn't as good a paper. So I checked online and in Australia I could only find one store that had this paper in stock and I bought the last of their stock. I really hope this doesn't mean that Canson has stopped manufacturing this paper. It's always concerning and uh, disappointing when uh, material that you're used to using uh, is no longer made and you're forced to use a uh, inferior substitute. Now this was before uh, COVID-19 had occurred as unrelated uh, to the situation we're currently in. But it is very concerning to me that many suppliers may not survive this financial downturn. I'll talk more about that in a minute. I'll press the sections overnight to get the air out of them. And in the meantime, I'll work on the split boards and the end papers. Compared to the usual springback, the boards for this book are going to be very lightweight. I'm going to use manila card for the inner card and 1.6mm grey board for the outside card. As usual, I'm making the boards oversized and then I'll cut them down to size later. I'll glue them together with PVA for about two-thirds of the width of the board. I mentioned before my concern about suppliers and fellow craftspeople. I think at the, in these trying times it's important that we generate as much financial activity in this sector as we possibly can so that as many of us can uh, survive this financially intact as possible. To this end, on my blog, dasbookbinding.com, I'm going to list all my suppliers, people I've used in the past, and uh, if possible, it would be great if you can support these people.
I'll make the end paper with a cloth hinge the same as I would for a normal spring back, except I'm not going to reinforce it with a second layer of cloth. That'd be overkill for this book, it's overkill for most. I'll go through the sections and I'll find the one that was the roughest fold and I'll cut that one up to get the folios for the end papers. The width of the cloth is about one inch or 25 millimeters, which is about half of what I normally use. And I'll leave about a 10 millimeter gap between the colored paper when I line the end papers. I try and keep these videos to book binding, but in these trying times we can all use a bit of a distraction. So I thought I'd mention something about uh, what I've done in the past. Now in the comments a number of times I've mentioned that uh, my family and I lived in the US for about 10 years. Uh, most of that time was in Madison, Wisconsin, though we did live in the Bay Area as well when my wife worked at Berkeley. Both my wife and I have PhDs in physics and used to work as research physicists. My specialty was working in remote locations, mostly Antarctica. I spent two winters in Antarctica, one of them at the South Pole. Uh, during the time I used to work, I used to write what's now called a blog, but most of it was done before blogs existed. And I have an old website where uh, some of my Antarctic material is. It's antarctica.culgun, K-U-L-G-U-N, dot net. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. And if you want to learn a bit about Antarctica, you might like to have a browse on this web page. It's very dated. I haven't updated it probably in almost 10 years, which was uh, how long it's been since I was last in Antarctica. People associate adventure with going to Antarctica, the extreme cold and the blizzards, but the reality is the biggest adventure of going to Antarctica is dealing with the social isolation. And now everyone in the world's getting a taste of that. It's a bit like spending a winter in Antarctica. If you're educating kids at home and want to do a project on Antarctica and you want an activity where they ask an ex Antarctician a question, uh, then send uh, an email to Darren, D-A-R-R-Y-N, at Culgan, K-U-L-G-U-N, dot net. And I'm happy to answer the questions. So back to the normal programming. The light score marks that I made were about 5 millimeters either side of the center. So there's about a 10 millimeter strip of cloth visible. Now I always do this thing of pasting out the thin paper or the paper that's going to be on the inside of the text so that the page, if it does curl, curls in. Uh, but for these, uh, especially if you use straight PVA instead of mix, you could just go ahead and paste out the uh, coloured instead of the white. Um, it'd just make it a little bit easier and faster, though it's already a pretty fast job. I'm putting some blotters between the pages and then I'll let them dry out under a bit of lightweight. I'll also put some layers of holy text, which is a, 
a non-woven polyester fabric between them to stop them sticking together. You can just use some uh, baking paper, some non-stick paper as well. I only left them in the press for about 10 minutes and I really didn't apply a lot of pressure to them and then I'll let them uh, dry hanging up. When marking up the spine, I'm coming in 10 millimeters for the kettle stitch locations. If you do want to make this a miniature book, get it under three inches, then come in 20 millimeters and uh, trim off an extra 10 millimeters uh, at each end. I'm using Rami Band uh, to, as the sewing support because it's so thin and it's very strong. Because I want to keep the swell under control, I'm using a fairly fine thread, a 43 ply linen thread. And the sewing is going to be fairly standard. I'll do the usual thing of sewing around the supports for the end papers to get a continuous line of thread uh, against the cloth and then all along for the rest of the sections.
I'll glue up the spine with PVA, but I won't glue over the tapes because I haven't rounded yet. Once I've uh, glued the spine, I'll trim the edges with the guillotine. I forgot to get a token shot of me going to the guillotine, but you know what I've done. I'm going to color the foredge first. I'm doing a sort of a cyan color, which sort of matches the color theme of the book. And uh, then I'll round the book and then I'll do the head and tail. I'm just giving the edges a light sand uh, because I'm not after a mirror finish on these. I'm also talking the edges so they don't stick together. Though I am using a watered down acrylic ink which doesn't tend to stick anyway. But it's better to be safe than sorry. Next week we'll make the levers out of the outer waste sheets. Then we'll make the spring and attach the spring. And then we'll attach the split boards. And in the final and third video we'll cover the book. As always I really appreciate the positive feedback through the big thumbs up button. Now I want everyone to stay home if they can and stay safe. Stay connected to your family and friends. Call them up, leave them lots of messages. Leave heaps of comments on this video. If you're a healthcare worker or an emergency services worker or have some other job where you have potential exposure to the virus, then everyone really appreciates the work you're doing and I want you to work really safe. So that's everything for today. So until next time, cheerio.